If you saw these in the wild, you'd probably want to steer clear. But the truth is, only one of these is a real bee. The rest are harmless flies, mimics of a model. Can you guess which one is the real one? Perhaps you found it pretty easy and found it right away, or maybe you were tricked by their disguise. The mimic flies do a relatively good job of imitating the patterning, the body shape, and in some cases, even the behaviour of the bees. Bees use bright contrasting colours such as yellows, reds and black to signal that they are of no interest to any predators. This is known as aposematism and many different insects find themselves converging on a similar model of signalling. This is known as Mullerian mimicry and it's a form of honest signalling because all of them are sending the same honest message to a potential predator. We are not going to taste good. The mimic flies are exploiting a form of dishonest mimicry known as Batesian mimicry because they're piggybacking off the protection that's conferred by looking like an animal that is distasteful but without having to go through the cost of having a sting or producing the compounds for a bad taste. Mimicking a poisonous or distasteful animal is actually quite a clever strategy, provided there are sufficient models around that a predator is likely to encounter it and associate that patterning with bad taste, meaning that they're going to be avoided in the future. However, something that often puzzles scientists is that many mimics are actually very poor models of the real thing, and there are quite a few hypotheses out there that aim to explain this. Some of the evolutionary hypotheses state that perhaps the mimics just haven't had enough time to converge on the model, or perhaps the model and the mimic are engaged in an evolutionary arms race, whereby the model is also under pressure to evolve away from the mimic. However, these theories have two very big caveats. First of all, they're very hard to test, and secondly, they completely ignore what's going on inside a predator's mind when it's deciding on what animal to eat. If a predator chooses to simply not eat anything that vaguely resembles a bee or a wasp, then the mimic isn't under any strong selection to evolve to look exactly like the model. And there are two hypotheses out there that explain why a predator may choose to avoid anything that might be a poor copy of a model. The first one is known as the speed accuracy hypothesis. When you're on the search for food, you don't want to spend ages deciding whether the food you're looking at is potentially edible or not. If you're going to take a long time to decide if it's edible, you're probably going to adopt a safety first policy and just choose to move on to something different. The second is categorization, which allows the placement of specific boundaries in the items that's found in the predator's environment and also allows them to be much more economical with their memory. For instance, in my case, I really love insects, so I know that I tend to categorise them by order. And if you know the difference between the dipterans, which are the flies, and the hymenopterans, which are the bees, the wasps, and the hornets, it can be very easy to tell them apart. Dipterans only have a single pair of wings, whereas the hymenopterans and basically all other flying insects have two pairs of wings. The flies also have much fatter thoraxes, no cinching at the waist, and much larger eyes. And they're also, as the name hoverfly suggests, much better and elegant at flying than the bees are. However, if you're a predator without access to encyclopedias, without a love for insects, and on top of that you're really short on time, you're much more likely to form categories surrounding colours, patternings and shapes, as opposed to small minutiae. And we know that birds are able to form and distinguish between different categories, such as pigeons, who can tell the difference between different species of tree leaves, and also between different styles of paintings. Now, although the specifics of mimicry psychology are still unknown, that doesn't stop it from being a fascinating topic. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. As always, thank you so much for watching me, and I'll see you in the next one.